let fx equal to summation running from n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 raised to the power n x into x minus 1 raised to the power n for x lies between 0 and 2 it means open interval 0 comma 2 then the value of f at pi by 4 is we have to find f at pi by 4 it means some numeric value will be answer of this question so how to proceed this question first given us given to us is fx is equal to summation running from 0 to infinity minus 1 raised to the power n x into x minus 1 raised to the power n for x is coming from open interval 0 comma 2 now this is compact form in expanded form you can see this as minus 1 if I put n equal to 0 then minus 1 raised to the power 0 x x minus 1 raised to the power 0 plus minus 1 raised to the power 1 x x minus 1 raised to the power 1 plus minus 1 raised to the power 2 x x minus 1 raised to the power 2 plus and so on it means x involved here here and here so you can take outside this one and it will be minus 1 raised to the power 0 something raised to the power 0 is again 1 so x minus 1 raised to the power 0 also the value of this one will be 1 so 1 plus it will be minus 1 so I directly put minus 1 and x also came outside it will be x minus 1 left plus minus 1 is square x minus 1 whole square and so on now you can see this will be x outside and if you divide this term by previous term 1 then minus 1 divided by 1 you will get minus of x minus 1 and if you divide coming term x minus 1 is square divided by minus 1 x minus 1 now x minus 1 1 power cancel out so minus of x minus 1 left so you can see here x minus 1 minus of x minus 1 is common common geometric common ratio or geometric common ratio and some infinite sum of geometric series infinite sum of geometric series can be evaluated by 1 upon 1 minus r one upon one minus r and r is minus of x minus one or you can say one one minus x one and it will be x minus one minus one cancel out by one so it will be one upon x Now 
put this value in this expression. It will be x inside 1 upon x. So, value is 1. It means fx equal to 1. For x is coming from open interval 0, 2, it means f is constant function. Constant function and value of constant function at any point within domain is same so f at pi by 4 is equal to 1 let f is a function defined from r square to r given by this structure then we need to find partial derivative with respect to x of del f upon del y minus partial derivative with respect to y of del f upon del x at the point 0 0 now first understand the meaning of partial derivative as first partial derivative of del f upon del y it can be written as partial derivative with respect to x f y now what is what is the meaning of fy suppose this is input and we need to find derivative with respect to y then limit as suppose h for x and k for y k for y means increment or suppose we are choosing these h and k such that we are going to approach a specific point as we are going to find f y so i am taking k tends to 0 limit of f of and at a point a b at a point a b so a comma b plus k minus f of a b divided by k as k tends to 0 this is the meaning of partial of f with respect to y at the point a b but we need to find partial with respect to x of this one so, partial f with respect to x at the point a b can be written as limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h comma b minus value at the point f a b and h divided by h. Now, come to the point as equation 1, partial x of partial f with respect to y will be, this is input function, input function and we need to find at the point 0, 0, so input at the point and input is f y at the point 0 and we are taking partial derivative with respect to x so change in x so 0 plus h comma 0 minus function at that point function or input function is f y and it is at 0 0 divided by h and h tends to 0 now let us suppose this is equation 2 and we need to calculate this impression first fy at 0 plus h 
comma zero. This will be f y h comma zero. H comma zero is the point where we need to calculate partial derivative of f with respect to y, and it will be limit k tends to zero because with respect to y. So whenever I take a derivative with respect to y, I choose change k if with respect to x then h. So function is f at that point h comma zero and change y coordinate with this k minus f at the point h comma zero divided by k. This equal to limit k tends to zero f of h k minus f of h comma zero divided by k. Now function f x y given by x square y x minus y divided by x square plus y square when x y is not equal to zero zero or origin so hk will be this one so limit k tends to zero h square k h minus k divided by h square plus k square and this is k this is k coming from here. So limit k tends to zero and this k cancel out by this one h square h minus k divided by h square plus k square. When k tends to zero, when k tends to zero value of this one will be h cube divided by h square equal to h now put this value in here so it can be written as this is h minus and f y zero zero we will calculate f y zero zero divided by h this is the limit limit h tends to zero now call this equation two we need to calculate f y at zero zero so f y at zero zero will equal to limit k tends to zero function value at zero zero and change in y coordinate so 0 plus k minus f of 0 0 divided by k as x coordinate is 0 so f is x square y and x minus y divided by x square plus y square x coordinate is 0 so value of this one or all function value will be 0 so 0 minus 0 divided by k and limit k tends to 0 so this value is 0 now put this value in equation 2 if you put this value in equation 2 it will be limit h tends to 0 h minus 0 divided by h equal to h upon h equal to 1 so value of we need in first as you can see this value is 1 now we need to calculate value of this one so partial derivative with respect to y of partial f 
with respect to x this can be written as fx so it will be del f del upon del y of fx at the point 0 0 this will equal to limit k tends to 0 because with respect to y k tends you can take uh, h here also but uh, remember the coordinate either change in x or change in y so we will take change with respect to y fx 0 0 plus k minus f of 0 0 divided by k and this one equal to limit k tends to 0 fx 0 comma k minus f of 0 0 divided by k now call this is equation 2 so we need to calculate fx 0 k and this means that limit h tends to 0 why because we are taking derivative with respect to x well f at the point 0 plus h comma k minus f of at that point divided by h and this one equal to limit h tends to 0 f of h comma k minus f of 0 comma k divided by h as x coordinate is 0 by the defining property or defining structure of f this value will be 0 so it can be written as limit h tends to 0 f of h comma k minus 0 divided by h and this one equal to limit h tends to 0 this is h square k within bracket h comma k h minus k divided by h square plus k square and this is h now one power cancel out by this one so this equal to limit h tends to 0 h k h minus k within bracket divided by h square plus k square as h tends to 0 as h tends to 0 the value of this one is 0 upon 0 plus k and this one equal to zero check once again h k within bracket h minus k ok it is fine now put this value in equation 2 so this value is 0 so limit from this point limit k tends to 0 this value is 0 minus f 0 comma 0 is 0 and k and this value is 0 so put this this value in original equation as we need we need to put or find the value of partial with respect to x f of f y minus partial with respect to y f x this value i got 1 minus 0 so value is equal to 1
you can check in this one we get the value 1 an equal to this one then the radius of convergence of the power series this about x equal to 0 is we have many methods to find radius of convergence of the power series but which one method is good to solve this problem in easiest way as you can see n is involved in numerator and uh, here in denominator and this one and here and this an is the sum of two rationals an is sum of two rationals suppose first and second first is numerator of first rational is 1 plus minus 1 raised to the power n and numerator of second one is 1 plus minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 and denominator is 2 raised to the power n and 3 raised to the power n when we have either mod or this type means sum and n is involved in our general format of the power series a and x raised to the power n is given then and about x equal to 0 then radius of convergence can be easily find limit and tends to infinity un or as a n raised to the power 1 upon n and this can be written as lim soap of a n raised to the power 1 upon n and this one because 1 upon r is here so limit and tends to infinity mod of u n plus 1 divided by u n and I took mod because if for any re real number suppose this power series is obtained alternating series so I took mod here so we can easily tell about the radius of convergence of positive term series sometimes radius of convergence is not give the exact idea about the convergence of the power series so we study or studied interval of convergence of power series somehow interval of convergence and radius of convergence is correlate and estimate estimate for convergence of the power series but interval of convergence is somehow precise way to say the convergence of power series because suppose if radius is 2 then we can't say about the boundary points is at boundary points the power series is convergent or not because for interior points this power series may be convergent but at boundary point may not be so if anyhow we can find the interval interval of convergence then it is best to say about the convergence of the power series so I'm going to solve this problem by this method or formula 1 upon r equal to limit superior of a n raised to the power 1 upon n and a n is 1 plus minus 1 raised to the power n divided by 2 raised to the power n and 1 plus minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 divided by 3 n and when we break this a n for n as odd and n as even then for odd value this one will go to 0 so it will be 1 plus minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 n minus 1 will will be even so even power divided by 3 raised to the power n and when n is even it will be 
वन प्लस वन डिवाइडेड बाय टू रेज टू दावर एन दिस इज ए एन सो वन अपॉन आर इक्वल टू लिम सोप ऑफ ए एन एंड ए एन इज दिस वन रेज टू दावर वन अपॉन एन If I apply raise to the power n on this one, or first uh, I solve a n because a n power is here, so one plus one, two divided by three raise to the power n, when n is odd, and two upon two raise to the power n, when n is even. This is a n, and apply raise to the power. One upon n, so it will be two raised to the power one upon n divided by three as n odd, and it will be two raised to the power one upon n divided by two as n even. This is a n raised to the power one upon n, and this one can be written as now limit because I need limit superior. So limit superior of this one will be limit superior is. Infimum, and infimum is largest upper bound. So largest lower bound, lower bound, and in other terms you can say largest limit limiting value. When n tends to infinity then this one will be 2 raised to the power 0 divided by 3 as n odd and it will be 2 raised to the power 0 divided by 2 as n even and this one equal to 1 upon 3 As an odd, and one upon two as an even. Now, which one is largest limit? So, largest limit is half. Or if you found largest lower bound, that one is also one upon two because one upon three is less than one upon two. So, value of one upon r is one upon two. As this is the value of one upon two, this implies r equal to two. So radius of convergence of this power series is two. Let W one be the real vector space of phi by two matrices such that the sum of entries in each row is zero, and W two be the real vector space of phi by two matrices such that entries in each column is zero. Then dimension of the space W one intersection W two is. It means we have to find dimension of intersection as W one is vector space of phi by two matrices. Matrices and W two is also a vector space of phi by two matrices and having the property W one row sum zero, row sum zero. And this W two having the property column sum zero. Now we have to find dimension of intersection of W one and W two. And what is the meaning of dimension? Dimension is number of non-zero elements. Number of non-zero elements in bases. In bases or bases. So there is no. Importance of saying non-zero elements because if zero element is there, then set become 
dependent so number of elements in basis normally called dimension and basis elements are linearly independent at spanning and they form a spanning set so one method is find the dimension of w1 and w2 their sum and apply this formula uh, dimension of w1 here because if uh, normally a b c d this is the format of 2 by 2 matrices then its basis b make first entry 1 and other 0 again b in place of b make one there and other entry zero it what it means one zero it is first element in place of b make one and other entry zero in place of c make one and other entry zero and in place d make one and other entry zero then this is the elements in basis so if matrix is given it means non-zero or non-zero or fields elements number of fields elements consider as the dimension of the space so dimension of w1 will be because w1 size of w1 is 5 by 2 so maximal maximum possible non-zero entries are 10 so its dimension is 10 similarly dimension of w2 will be 10 and find dimension of their sum w1 plus w2 and apply the formula w1 dimension of w1 plus dimension of w2 minus dimension of intersection minus intersection of w1 and w2 so you can find dimension by using this formula or second method is find the basis of w1 for w2 also and find common elements in their basis that will give you the dimension of the intersection so second method is this but i am going to use other method sometimes it is very convenient when system of equation or linearly independent choices or constraint is given to us then this method is useful also when matrices is given then it is also when differential equation solution of a differential equation is given because solution of differential equation forms vector space so this formula uh, concept is more general and uh, easy one as w1 or w2 having the matrix size 5 by 2 so normally it will look like a b c d e f g h i g this is the format of the elements either in w2 or in w1 consider a um, 3 by 3 matrix a b c d e f g h i and i say row sum is 0 row sum is 0 it means a plus b plus a for particular first row is equal to 0 it means all constituent sum is 0 in first row it means you are independent either choose a or c this is first pair then b will be additive inverse of their sum if you choose a b then c will be the additive inverse of their sum if you choose is bc then sum of there will be additive inverse of third entry so suppose a equal to 1 b equal to 2 then c equal to minus of a plus b it means minus 3 it means you are independent only choose two entries here then other will be depend dependable or depend similarly for either in w1 or w2 so suppose this is the condition for w1 as row sum is 0 each row sum is 0 it means if a is non-zero entry then b 
will be minus of a so I change pen color so you can look better if C here then it will be minus E if E then it will be minus E minus G and minus I by this is the property of W1 and by the property of W2 column sum is 0 then suppose for conveniency these four entries are non zero or independent choice then this last entry will depends on their sum it means this i entry will be a plus c plus e plus z and it's negative and this one what is their sum for second column for second column second column sum will be minus a minus c minus e minus g so this is minus i so minus i will be a c e g and their sum will be zero so it is perfect so how many how many independent choice or non zero choice values here maximum non zero value a c e g i is dependent on their sum so for independent choice here so dimension of w1 intersection w2 is 4 8 a k by minus 1 raised to the power k minus 1 and sn is the sum of first a n then sigma n defined by this one and k and n are coming from natural number then limit of sigma n is this is a numerical type question now first a k is given by minus 1 raised to the power k minus 1 and k is coming from set of natural numbers so we can break this a k for even and for odd when k is even then k minus 1 will be odd and if k minus 1 odd then value of this one will be minus 1 and when k is odd then value of k minus 1 will be even if you add or subtract from odd to or even then you will get other one if subtract from odd one then you will get even if you subtract or add in even then you will get odd so value of this one will be one and this is a k now sn is a1 plus a2 a n or you can say partial sum of a k and sigma n is s1 plus s2 and so on up to sn divided by n and this term is known as sometimes average or sometimes mean this is nothing but average as you can understand ak is this one then s n will be a1 up to a n generalize this one we are starting from odd so first value is 1 then minus 1 then 1 minus 1 and 1 if we are going up to even then suppose this is even terms then the result will be 0 if you are going to odd 1 then 1 extra because in some other term will be cancel out so this is sn now you can write s1 1 s2 0 because second term of s2 is 0 as even 0 s3 is 1 s4 
is 0, S5 is 1. Then sigma n, you can say that S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4 plus S5. We generalize this one. Suppose n is even, then its sum will be 1, 0, 1, 0. Means half of n and when odd, then 1 extra. Means this value will be 1 because 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, one extra value it means n by 2 plus 1 this is sigma and sigma is divided by or is also by n so i divide it by n and we have to find well value of or limiting value of sigma n and sigma n by further solving n upon 2n when even and n by 2 plus 1 outside n when odd and this one can be written as 1 upon 2 even by n cancel out by n and this one will be half plus 1 upon n so limit of sigma 1 means when n tends to 0 when n tends to 0, this one will be half when even and when odd, this is also half plus 0 or equal to half. You can see that for all n, value is half. If we will get different value, if anyhow we get different value, the limit we say of sigma n doesn't exist. And limit is unique, so in both case, either even or odd, we got value half. So answer of this problem is half.